Uh, I'd like to call the meeting of the Madison County Fiscal <coughs> Court to order. Kenny? Master King? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Hughes? Here. Master Combs? Judge Clark? Here. Um, before we get started, I'd like to amend the agenda. Uh, Carl's got to, would like to open bids for CSEP, the uh, diverse phone system that they've been working on for so long. So if that would be okay with him, I don't think we need a form of a motion, but if everybody's okay with it. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Um, we've had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. If there are no changes or discussion, the motion would be in order to approve those as submitted in your packet. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, Treasurer report. Uh, Glenn is going to wait till the next meeting. She has been swamped with some other things and uh, really hadn't had a chance to put that together. So I think uh, we're going to, if everybody's okay with that, we'll wait till the next meeting and get that treasury report. And at this time, we'll go on into the uh, public hearing. And this is a road closure request. from oh okay let's go solid waste quarter Tom Scott Good morning, everyone. I'm here to report on what we've been up to for the third quarter of 2011. Start out with this fall, we started out the fall road cleanup. So far, we have done 250 county road miles, and that is accounted for 1,081 bags of litter and 14 tires. We're pretty much finished with that. We'll be finishing up with the fall road cleanup here uh, by the middle of next, next month. Uh, the Lona Trucks, valuable service, uh, free county service that we, we provide for our citizens. They were set at 63 locations during the third quarter of 2011. Uh, that's 63 residents where that garage or that basement has been cleaned out uh, free of charge. Just a great service. If you were to call today, uh, reservations for the Lona Trucks, uh, as of this morning, it looks like the quickest we could get you in is December 22nd. So, excellent service. Uh, issued five notices of violations for garbage problems during the third quarter. Uh, just using an example there, that is a roadside dump that we found on Oakley Wells Road um, near the new br the bridge that we fixed down there over Muddy Creek. That took about uh, probably an hour to clean up with about five guys and uh, found a couple names in there. Ended up being an apartment. Apartments, those are hard people to track down. Uh, send it to an apartment and it always comes back so that one that was actually an OV that didn't get to, that, that, <laughs> that didn't get off the ground for any prosecution or anything um, but still we cleaned it up and got it all taken care of large item pickup we removed 100 pieces of furniture and miscellaneous items 17 appliances 30 miscellaneous pickups 21 electronic scrap pickups and 42 recycle bin replacements. Uh, keeps us busy, have about two or three of those every day, uh, and uh, large item. Neighborhood recycling program, I won't uh, go through the, just talk about the, the bottom number, 190,995 pounds during third quarter. Uh, that may look like a pile of trash on the left, but that is a great pile of recycling. Uh, program's going great, we're getting ready to, I've got uh, seven neighborhoods that'll be coming online this fall and uh, everything's going great with recycling. Uh, dead animal livestock removal service looks like in July we had 71 head removed and August 92 and September 104 looks like it's picking up a little bit during the quarter. Uh, it comes out to a 22.25 average a week. That's a little bit below that, the weekly average of 25 that had been in the past. But I expect uh, during with, as the weather gets a little cooler this fall and winter that that'll pick up. So, uh, household hazardous waste has actually just took place in the in the fourth quarter this year, but I decided I'd go ahead and report on it. Uh, main main event: we had 166 cars come through, and uh, that those 
between those cars, you, people were dropping off household hazardous waste and electronic scrap too. Uh, if you see, that's an example of a, a typical car that came through to uh, drop off some chemicals and paint and pesticides and whatnot. I'm going to go through a few slides and just give you uh, a synopsis of what happened that day. Uh, that's Carolyn Jennings from the Recycling Center. Her and Don Sparks volunteered from the day from the city. They came out and helped us. It's always a great asset to, to have some volunteers. Carolyn's holding a uh, little vial of mercury there that somebody turned in. Uh, during the day, we processed 18 pounds of, or brought in 18 pounds of mercury, 28 pounds of fluorescent bulbs, 590 pounds of asbestos. Those were some tiles that somebody brought in. Uh, Almost 6,000 paint, uh, pounds of paint, 12,000 or 1,200 pounds of flammable liquid, 645 pounds of toxic solids, 1,400 pounds of aerosols and flammable items. As you can see, uh, the, the event took place out at the road department south. People would pull up onto the plastic right there, and then we had a crew from Veolia who was the contractor for the day. Uh, they would unload. All people had to do was pull up pop their trunk open or open their back door and Violi would take it out and then they would place it on their table to look at uh, classifying it to see where they needed to store it at in their system. Uh, we also 180 pounds of flammable liquids and another 437 pounds of miscellaneous stuff that I won't go into explaining all those. Uh, from there it was put onto this table and uh, from there uh, you know, we had 9,400 pounds of household hazardous waste from the entire day. Uh, if you do that by 166 cars, that averages out to 56 pounds per car. And then classified there, and then they shift it over to the, if you see the oil drums over there, they shift it into the oil drums, or just the steel drums for shipping. They overpack them and make everything safe to ship out It'd be good. So uh, we had a great day, obviously. That's uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day is supplied from a state grant that we, we apply for every year, and we get uh, you know extra great event for the citizens. Any questions? Any questions? Good job. I think it's a good program for a community. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Scott. Next on the agenda, we have a uh, <clears throat> portion of Bill Eads, Bill, uh, East Bill Eads Road that the owners have requested for closure. I'll uh, go through the petition from the property owners, and that's Anel Butcher, Shelby Joe Bergen, and Louise Denise Butcher Turner. They have uh, requested because of people using it uh, unlawfully it really doesn't serve any purpose. We've sent our road commissioners out uh, with Leroy and Bill Eads Road 1312 non-maintained section. Road Supervisor Leroy Brock noted that the non-maintained section is approximately 2,906 feet long. On-site inspection from Bill East Bill Eads Road side shows eroded ruts, exposed, exposed rod at rock as you enter the non-maintained section and there's steeper banks on the narrowed roadbed and brush and trees have grown up adjoining the area. On-site on inspection of the west side of the non-maintained section from Boone Trail number 1309 shows entry of the roadbed in an existing creek from a sloping incline. Erosion has taken place, rock is exposed and brush and trees are growing. The non-maintained section does not appear to have been used consistently for many years. And this was signed by not only Leroy, but Jimmy Markham and Gary Hart, who are our road commissioners. I'll let you all have that. Uh, this is pretty much the public hearing that we have. Uh, the signs were placed uh, according to the KRS. Uh, you all have a copy, as you see on the screen, of what this road consists of. It's uh, just one of those that's being used by people that don't need to be using it. And I've got letters from the property owners stating that uh, they would uh, 
really appreciate the county going on and closing this. And what we do when we do this is we allow them to put gates up to keep the four wheelers and things out. Um, I've got the tax bills and things. All the property owners, all the adjoining property owners were notified. And uh, at this time, I'd like to ask if there's anybody in the courtroom that uh, opposes the proposed road closing. And if so, they're welcome to come forward. If not, is there anybody here that supports the proposed road closing? I think. Oh, y'all want to come up, Shelby Joe? Or? <laughs> Won't you speak to the microphone, Miss Butch? Yes, yes, you have to talk. Well, it's just been aggravation for years and years. Uh, our fences have been cut. Uh, we've cut trees down across it. We've done everything we know to do to keep them out of there. And uh, I'm ready to close it. Been ready for years. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Shelby Joe? Judge Clark, it's been a, just a lot of traffic through there and not the right kind of traffic. It's been used as a dump. Uh, we've lost cattle. Uh, a lot of property's been stolen. Uh, over the years, the tools that's been stolen probably uh, entrance off that road probably wouldn't fill this room right here. And it's getting worse and worse. And you've been down there and you've seen you've seen what's <laughs> kind of going on down there. And it's it's just a nuisance. And if it could be clothed, we'd certainly appreciate it. And had a <coughs> neighbor had a tractor stolen and her son and son called me and I said, I think I can probably find that tractor. His uh, Drexel Connolly. I took off a walking and I found his tractor as a right new Ford tractor <laughs> hid back in there. And uh, I called them, they come got it. So it's just, it's really a nuisance. That's well, we've looked at it, Leroy and I have been down there and we've met with you and, you know, I, I agree with the, the commissioners that uh, it, it serves no purpose yeah. whatsoever other than people that don't need to be used. Yeah. So <laughs> certainly appreciate it if you could do something. Thank All right. You. Thanks, Shelby Joe. Uh, open the floor for comments from the magistrates. Uh, this road is in my district and I've uh, been aware of it for years. and. Uh, it's something that should have been closed a long time ago, probably simply because there's not that many landowners that it uh, uh, joins, so it shouldn't be that complicated to uh, close the road because it, it, there's no access needed through there really, and just like they said, the ones that are going through there don't need to be there. But uh, it's, it, no doubt in my mind it needs closed. I, I'd like to say, you know, one of the worst messes I ever got into was on closing the road about like this right here. And I, I'd like, for me, you know, if the newspaper would report that we're considering closing this road and if anyone has any misapprehensions or concerns about closing this road, I, I, I'd like for us to wait till the next meeting. Can we do that, Judge, and not, not make a motion on this today? Just to see if there's someone out there that's that's got a legitimate concern about why this road should not be closed. I, I just want to make sure that that gets everyone has the opportunity to be heard. Uh, I, I, I want to avoid a situation that I had a few years ago on closing the road. Well, that'll be kind of up to the court because it has been advertised in the paper. Everybody, every adjoining property owner has been notified by certified letter and we have posted signs on both ends of the road for the uh, time that's required by the KRS so I would think now I'll open it up <coughs> to the rest of the court but I would think if anybody had any opposition to closing the road that they would have come forward today and uh, said something negative about it well I'm just saying it it's been there for a hundred years and another couple of weeks not going to make or break the deal. Do we vote on this twice or just one time? Just, it's just once. Just once. Just once. I'm, I personally, myself, not forever closing in county roads, but 
as Roger, it's in his district, and I asked him how he felt about it. And you know, if it's not a continuing road that somebody uses for maybe emergency to get out of, if it's uh, as it's called a dirt road, then I don't see where it's been maintained. <clears throat> this road is in your fields, isn't it? It's, it's, I mean, it's not fenced off on each side from your all's property, is it? Is most of it fenced off? Part of it is. Okay. The cattle can, you know, get in the road unless the fence yeah. has been cut. Okay. You can't imagine how many we've pulled out of mm. what my husband called city holes. Mm. Uh, Judge Clark, did, uh, did y'all put a notice on my end there? Yes. <laughs> they stole the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I knew they put the signs up. I didn't know how long they did. We put the Same. signs up. No, it, it was gone. I never did get the chance to see it. So. it yeah, it was put up, printed on both ends of the road. Okay, well, my, my end never, got, never lasted very long. Does anybody in that area use that for access road? It's just dead. No access. Are there trees growing up in it? You can't travel the road. I, I tried to get down and you can't go down it. A four wheel can get to it. It's just constant. People going in and out of that. Now, I've not had anybody call me to ask me to keep the road open because they need to use it. And the other roads, I've had calls on both sides. You know. You have to have a lot of clearance, big tires, all that kind of stuff. We've been there. It's, it's just another party place is what it is. I know Denise. Uh, Pusher Floyd, I know her, and she's told me that you know that she really's been aggravated by people that get done in there, and because she lives at the end there. And well, there's been a couple of people where their GPSs get the booms they put them yeah. up there. Yeah, <laughs> she told me that. And you would think when they got to the end of the blacktop that they realized <laughs> the road wasn't. I mean, you wasn't going to Boonesboro there, and they would try to get on through and. <clears throat> Well, I would open the floor. We've heard from people that own the property like to, and Billy Ray, I understand your point of view too, because we've had some interesting sessions on closing roads. But personally, I think this one is one that uh, definitely uh, would justify the court closing. So I would ask the court if there was a motion to uh, go on and close this road, according to Calrace. I'll make that motion. I'll second it since there's nobody here to oppose it. Master King? Yes. Master Barton? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Thank you all for coming in, and you're welcome to put your gates up. <laughs> okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the Animal Control Advisory Board grant, and this is for the animal shelter. And uh, we have been awarded a grant of totaling it's almost fifty thousand dollars to build another building out at the animal shelter um, we have built two so far and we really we kind of uh, planned on when we bought the tri-state property going there with the animal shelter and then we needed another road department so uh, we're taking advantage of all the property we have out there and this will be a, another building, which we'll do in-house to save money. There's an in-kind match on it. And uh, of course, Keith turned it around and got the animal shelter back to where it needs to be. He's got a great staff out there. But uh, this will allow us to go on and build another building, which will un allow us to uh, enlarge our facility to keep cats. Uh, we've got a small room for cats, and this will allow us to uh, en enlarge that area and be able to uh, do a little bit more cat control. So what I'd like uh, is the court's permission to authorize me to sign all documentation in order to receive the $50,000 grant from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture 
for the expansion of the Madison County Animal Shelter. How much is the in-house that we have to make? To? It's, we just do it ourselves, Greg, really. It's, um, we save about 30, 40% on it. Okay. What I mean, we get that much money. There's, we just, when we do it ourselves and the construction so, crews, you know, caught that's up. going on out there now, is that what this is? Yes. What we're beginning to? Yes. We're putting the pad and stuff in right now. But we're having, we're, we're paying for that. Or is it coming out of this money when we get it? It's coming out of this money. How much land do we have out there? Well, we've got about three, three acres, but it's up on the hill. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we'd love to do is get a grant to run down to uh, down the road just a little bit and hook on to Bria sewer because we've got a septic out there right now that uh, we don't have a whole lot of problems with, but it would be really nice to get onto a regional sewer system. So we felt like that uh, this was available and we'd never really gone after a grant. Uh, Keith was very aggressive with it, and, and Keith and Jeff and Leroy put together a great grant application, and we, wanted, we were one of the few that uh, received it and thought that we'd just uh, build another building, and then our next phase of the animal shelter will be trying to hook onto the sewer down in Herndon Lane. Make a motion, we accept. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? <coughs> Master yes. Hughes? Yes. Judge Clark. Yes. Um, <clears throat> as usual, I'd like to uh, ask the court's permission to go into a small executive session dealing with personnel. And uh, if everybody would leave, and I promise it won't, it will be a very short, as always, a very short ex executive session.